This is a big drone. So this is the DJI Matrice 300 RTK, a drone unlike any other with multiple uses, including the insane ability to recreate a 3D map of anything you fly over. Yes, if you had enough of these, you could create a life-size 3D world. If you want to get a brief idea of how it works, then please keep watching and hit that subscribe button. I'm Jack from Edinburgh Drone Company. Let's get into this review. So the purpose of this video is just to give you a rough idea of what the DJI M300 RTK is. I'll go through the main features of the drone, then our chosen payload of the P1 compared to other payloads, and finally, what it does and a wee bit on how to use it. There is a lot to cover on this drone and if I tried to do it all, this video would be as long as The Sopranos. Just a quick disclaimer before we start. Uh, essentially what we do at EDC is scour the world for all the drones manufactured and bring the best of the bunch straight to you. We have no affiliation or priority to any one brand, however we do retail these drones through our website which you can find in the description. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So what is the M300 RTK? The DJI M300 RTK is part of the Enterprise range from DJI. These drones, as previously mentioned, aren't for cinematic purposes. They are very much drones that serve all practical sides of the drone world, from 2D and 3D mapping to public safety. To date, as of this video, it is DJI's latest commercial drone. It offers great safety and security features, and each pair of batteries offers a quite astounding 55-minute max flight time, but that is going to lower depending on the payload. It comes with its own case and two batteries for charging, as the batteries are rather large, but a great feature is the batteries recharge quicker than they can be used. So although they are expensive, realistically once you have four and you can work a rotation system, you're basically set. It has an amazing transmission range of 8 kilometers. it offers triple channel 1080p video, and along with all this it's more reliable in high interference areas. It also has an IP45 weather resistance rating against dust and water. So yes, the drone can fly in rain and it has been proven and it's quite astonishing. All in all, it's an extremely solid and reliable UAV for the commercial world of drones where industry standards are always growing. So let's talk a bit about the payload. As mentioned, the Zenmuse P1 is a full frame 45 megapixel camera that comes in many different focal lengths. We have the 35mm. This lens is designed for photogrammetry flight missions. It takes efficiency and accuracy to a whole new level. Now I'm sure some of you are wondering what photogrammetry means and it's a buzzword you'll hear a lot in this side of the drone industry. But basically photogrammetry is the science and technology of making measurements using photographs. So when you use the 2D, 3D or oblique ma mapping system for any building or location you choose, you are able to make accurate measurements for any form of construction. Well, we'll go into this further in a bit, so stay with me if this is all fairly new to you. So the H20T, which is the general stock payload that you normally see with the M300, is an all-around camera that covers all the features that the Matrice offers. However, although it is able to carry out mapping missions, the quality and accuracy will be nowhere near that of the P1. This works vice versa in that the P1 would be useless for things, for things such as power line surveying, as it's a prime lens and not a zoom lens like the HT20. The reason we have chosen the P1 is because we intend to capture reality for a full building or a land survey to provide reliable and accurate data that at the end of the day is usable. So just a bit about what this setup does and how to use it. And we're going to have to go back to some of the complicated stuff but made simple eventually. Another quick buzzword for you is orthomosaic. An orthomosaic is a photogrammetrically orthorectified image product mosaic from an image collection where the geometric distortion has been corrected and the imagery has been colour balanced to produce a seamless mosaic data set. Basically, it's the ability to stitch multiple photos together to create one map, essentially. This then allows for photogrammetry, as previously mentioned, and the ability to make measurements of any mosaic map you create. Now once again, stay with me, as the best way to explain all this is to show you. So we're going to cut to me in Fife in our training facility where I'll talk you through each stage of the process from creating the orthomosaic map and then carrying out photogrammetry in the post-production stage. So we're in Lucas Fife today with the M300 at our training facility. 
Uh, we're going to be showing off the mapping capabilities of this drone through the DJI Terra software on the laptop. Um, we'll be showing you the results and I'll talk you through each stage of the process as we go along. So I've got the smart controller out that comes with the M300 and I'm going to go through the screen and talk about what you do to set up the 2D and oblique mapping. So once you're into the controller, you want to press the pilot button, then select the mission button. Uh, in there, you'll get four options. We'll be using the mapping option to create the 2D, 3D map. Uh, then you'll arrive at a map of your location and you want to just zoom in and select the area in which you want to create your ortho mosaic map. Then you can move on to the specific settings on the right here, such as naming your mapping mission, so we'll just call this 2D map. Um, and then your chosen payload, which in our case is the Zenmuse P1 35mm. All the settings in which you see now can be very much trial and error and you'll slowly find out the best settings for each mission. For the 2D map, we'll be choosing a flight rate altitude of 175 feet and then we'll go slightly feet and then we'll go slightly lower for the oblique mapping which we'll do in a bit and see if there's any difference. Your target surface takeoff point changes your GSD which stands for ground sample distance so you'll get more pixels per centimetre and therefore have better accuracy in the post-production DJI Terra stage. In the advanced settings you can change your angle and margin if there's ever a situation where you don't want to fly over certain surroundings of the area you're trying to map. And once you're happy with the settings, you'll press the blue play button to the left, make sure you're in P mode on your controller, uh, and then press upload flight mission, then start and accept full responsibility if everything is okay, restrictions and legal wise. We have access to this land and there are no restrictions, so we'll Press that with no worries, uh, then it will go to the start point, follow your chosen route and land back at where you took it off from. For the oblique, it's a similar process except you choose the oblique option of course when selecting a mission and also you'll have five flight routes, so if you need to change the angle or margin you will need to do so with all five routes depending on your situation. Then it's all the same, it will fly off to the start point and begin mapping. So let's just go through the DJI Terra software now. We've got all the maps finished and we'll show you how you go through that and then how you can do some photogrammetry. So once you load up your DJI Terra software, uh, it's going to pop up with three options. Uh, we're going to be using the visible light option. The other two are for one is different payload and the other one is for a different sort of mission. Then you're going to want to name your mission for this export. We're just going to call it Lucas Flight Test, Test Flight, and it's going to be for my video. And uh, then you're going to want to click that top right photo and choose your specific photos from the mission that you've already carried out. Then you're going to see that all the photos have loaded on a map here. Then you're going to want to Go through your settings and make sure that's all okay. Again, a bit like flight settings, these are something you want to play with, but you know you want high resolution, that sort of thing. And um, we're just going to be good, we're going to be doing the oblique mission here, so you'll be seeing the 3D model as much as possible. Shows you everything. You press OK, and then you start the reconstruction. Now, DJI Terra comes. Um, the first six months are free when you buy the Zenmuse P1. After that, it's going to cost you a little bit after a year. Now, as you can see, it goes round and it's sort of rendering. If you look at the truck van here, just at the bottom right, you'll see as it comes round, it's going to slowly improve the quality as it's taken in the photos from that section. And there we have it. So once it's gone fully round and taken in all the photos in major ortho mosaic, you can also see where all the photos from the M300 have been taken. And, you know, this is very interesting just to see, you know, exactly where it was and maybe seeing some areas that aren't quite the quality you'd like. Now we're just going to show some of the photogrammetry you can do within the DJI Terra software and here we're just going to measure the roof of our building here and it will show you the distance in meters and this is accurate to within 10 millimeters so quite astounding really to have that sort of accuracy and 
The best thing about the TGI Terra, obviously here we're going to show you it in square meters if you choose a specific box. But as I was saying, the best thing about DJI Terra, and you can see there's no there's no end to the size you can do this, is it's very streamlined from buying the M300, the P1, and then downloading this software. You're going to have no problems and it's all going to do it very quickly. Now here we're just showing off a cliff face that we wanted to test the vertical ability but we're also going to show you how much you can zoom in and basically see every little rock every stone um, in this area here and it, it again it's quite astounding the quality that you can zoom into and then here we're just going to show off some of the vertical measurement because we we tried some of our own photos here as well as the flight path that was chosen and it worked out okay and you can see you'll get pretty accurate um, data so that was just a very brief insight into how we use the M300 here at EDC. If you've got any questions on this drone, which does an awful lot of things, just let us know down in the comments and we'll get back to you or possibly even make a video on it. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.